We're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're live at Oracle Open World. If Moscone is draped in red, it's Oracle Open World 2013, and this is theCUBE. We're going to continue on with this uh, discussion of, that we've been having around Flash. Gary Ornstein is here. He's the Senior Vice President at Fusion I.O. and a longtime CUBE alum. Gary, good to see you again. Thanks for having us. And uh, of course, David Floyer is with me, resident uh, Flash expert, infrastructure, database guy at uh, Wikibon. So Gary, uh, we, were, we were last here at, at VMworld, we were talking off camera, it's a totally different vibe here, right? I mean, this is, it's like big and everything's draped and you feel like you're inside the, the tent. Um, and at the same time, you know, Oracle's now claiming 60,000 people. I think they're doing that, David, because, you know, Salesforce was claiming 40,000, so <laughs> they've got to have, they've got to be bigger than Salesforce. But, um, so what's been new since uh, VMworld, Gary? What's happening in your world? So we have a number of things that we're showcasing at Oracle World around the use of flash memory and Oracle. And it you know, basically boils down to three things. We want to help customers do more transactions, we want to help customers make faster decisions, and we want to help them save money. And all of those things are enabled by using flash memory compared to conventional architectures where people were relying on disk drives for performance. So we're sharing a number of those things uh, here at the show today. Also integrations that we've done with Oracle Enterprise Manager and Oracle Virtualization Software. But you know, to make things simple, it comes down to more transactions, faster decisions, and at a lower cost. And, and that's a message that really can help any customer. So I mean, I just I'd make an observation, I wonder if you could comment. It's like, whatever you hear in the marketplace with the trends that coming from the startups and the, and the innovators, one to two years ago, you then hear at Oracle Open World. It really, it's, yeah. it's true. We hear, heard today about key value stores, we heard about Hadoop connectors, uh, uh, we, we heard about bringing analytics and, and transactional data together. And, yeah. and, and you know, I say that sort of tongue in cheek, but the reality is, is Oracle goes after the fat middle. And that's actually a good trend for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, I, you know, I think it's no surprise that we knew there would be a big focus on in memory at Oracle Open World. We've been talking about memory for quite some time. I think one of the nice things about hearing Larry talk about it uh, yesterday uh, during his keynote was the need not only to increase the number of transactions, but the need to increase the query time and really to, to reduce the query time, to increase the performance or reduce the query time. And we've seen this time and time again in customers who are looking to do essentially, you know, many type of things simultaneously. Either they're looking to increase transactions and increase queries. Another common workload that we see is the need to ingest data, the need to process that data, the need to present that data in a way that's actionable for the decision makers, and then a way to archive that data to a storage medium that makes sense for, for long-term archival. Doing all those things simultaneously, ingest, processing, presentation and archiving, you can't do that on conventional infrastructure and you have to move to a memory-based infrastructure. There was a lot of talk about DRAM yesterday. DRAM is a great uh, solution for a lot of people. We happen to think that flash memory provides a better cost-performance balance for folks who are looking to process these kind of transactions and so we've focused on providing our customers a way to do these type of things with a flash memory infrastructure. Well, it helps that it's persistent. I mean, we've heard you know, uh, guys like Bill McDermott say, imagine a world without, without disk drives. Well, right. I'd love to imagine a world without disk drives, but I can't imagine a world without persistent storage. Right, <laughs> so you're always going to need that persistence and flash memory is fitting a really great middle between uh, DRAM and disk drives to allow customers to transact more decide faster, but ultimately save, save more money. One of the things that I, I was uh, pleased to hear Mark Hurd talk about is, you know, last night Larry Ellison kept talking performance, performance, performance. This morning you heard Mark Hurd say, anytime a customer wants to take a portion of that performance and allocate it to cost savings, they can do that too. We shouldn't forget that the numbers that we increase on the top line can be flipped around so we save on the bottom line as well. And when we're talking so much about flash memory and performance, we sometimes forget to remind ourselves and also our customers that there are huge opportunities in cost savings in shrinking the infrastructure uh, with no sacrifice to performance whatsoever. So I'd like to ask uh, Gary one question about this in-memory in trend that we've been seeing. Um, clearly, uh, the, the requirement there is, is 
to get analytics in particular into real time, as much as real time, or close to real time as possible. And obviously, clearly, uh, you can do uh, bigger transactions, larger transactions, if you have the data and memory for the transaction systems. So it seems to me that in that environment, the requirement for flash is actually very, very important, because if you have to put that data out onto a disk drive of any sort, you've got a total bottleneck for a recovery or anything else like that. Right. Is that is that what you found in practice? Is sure. that what you uh, observe? Sure, you know, I, it, some of this uh, is always better conveyed in the words of our customers. We have a customer who said, you know, if I'm running my application and I'm serving my end users, and I have to leave the motherboard in order to complete a transaction or to complete a query, I'm kind of in trouble at that point because the speed delta is literally like you know, falling off a cliff. And so by using flash memory and having it be right there in the server that's processing the application, uh, they're able to essentially achieve that real-time workflow, which is so critical. You know, we live in a world where time is of the essence and nobody wants to wait. And uh, you, know, you combine that with the proliferation of mobile devices and endpoints and the need to serve all of that stuff from a single data center, a consolidated application from a single data center, and you know, there, there is no room for anything that's not in real time uh, in this day and age. One of the other things that we heard this morning, I don't know if you were able to you know, catch the, uh, the interview with the CEO of the NYSE, he said that uh, we used to measure you know, the, the transaction time in seconds just a few short years ago, and now we're measuring it in, in microseconds. And David, you've done I remember when Fusion I.O. came out with the, the benchmark of a billion I.O.s, you actually did a hypothetical model of how many disk drives it would take to achieve that. Yeah, <laughs> it was just so <laughs> phenomenal. It was an acre of uh, disk drives that were required to get to the same So to Gary's uh, level. point, right, you can yeah. always get the performance, it just yeah. it really wasn't practical to get to it, the it, performance. It was, it was uh, $30 million, I think it was, to achieve the same level of performance that was achieved with a, with a half a rack of equipment uh, at the demonstration. So yeah. Gary, as always, it's all about the application. So talk a little bit about how your customers are transforming the, their, their application portfolio. Sure, we've seen a tremendous uh, range of applications that customers are using for Oracle, of course, Oracle is the foundation layer upon which they'll do a particular application. So uh, just uh, yes, today we announced some of the use cases of our Ion Data Accelerator, as an example. Ion, uh, the Ion Data Accelerator is an, an all-flash appliance, but it's built on servers that our customers know and trust. So pick your favorite server from HP or Cisco or IBM or Dell or Supermicro and you can run uh, the ION software to share flash memory. So some of the examples, uh, one of the world's largest shipbuilders has their entire uh, product uh, uh, lifecycle management database for all the shipbuilding parts. They're able to create 3D models of what needs to be done in 15 seconds, what would have taken the minutes or hours previously. We have one of the largest uh, grocery chains in Asia that's recording point of sale information on ION. We have uh, companies that are deploying uh, analytics and shrinking their query times from many hours down to minutes so they can make decisions faster. One of the, my favorite stories is customers who are able to essentially create a new business day. So what they used to do before Fusion IO came along is they would wait until the end of the business day, let's just call it five o'clock, uh, and then they would run their queries because it would take many, many hours, sometimes running into the night, and then they'd come in in the morning and they'd be able to assess where things were, supply chain, inventory, demand, and, and make a new set of decisions. Now with Fusion IO, they've shrunk that time to just minutes. They now run those reports at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. By 3.30, they're finished. They've got 90 minutes left in the working day to act on those decisions. It is literally creating a new business day when it didn't exist before. So that's the kind of transformative change that we see with our customers being able to really do things that weren't possible before, enabled by either using flash memory directly in the server or using flash memory in a shared configuration such as which with our Ion Data Accelerator. So this is why I always like talking about uh, talking to Fusion IO because everybody always talks about the economics of flash and oh, we, we shouldn't be talking about cost per gigabyte, we should be talking about cost per mm. IO. It's really not even about that, it's about the business value. And David yeah. Floyd, you've made this point a number of times. Uh, uh, absolutely, and in fact, one of the business cases that we looked at was at Revere, which is a, a small outfit in Chicago, was actually running the whole of their 
database on a, a Fusion I.O. Uh, system. And what they found was that by doing the very thing you're talking about, being able to run uh, all, of the, all of the software at the same time, they could do the queries, they could do the um, right. uh, purchasing while other things were going on, while the call center was going on. Right. That enabled <coughs> them to increase their revenue by 20% without any headcount uh, yep. over less than a year. And the return on that is, that's 20% straight to the bottom line. Yeah, the return I mean, on that is, is, is another, another way of thinking about the whole yeah, I mean, benefit I think, of speeding Absolutely, up. I mean, time is money. And so when we're able in that case to allow somebody to run their transactions that they need to do on a daily basis to keep their business afloat, plus run the analytics so they can tune their business and adjust appropriately and do that at the same time. It, get back, it gets back to the same comment I made in other cases where people need to ingest, process, present, and archive, that kind of flow at the same time. Uh, in this case, people need to be able to do the transactions plus do the analytics at the same time. So all of these things come back to essentially creating time opportunities for our customers which translate into real dollars. So Gary, I, we talk a lot about Fusion I.O. and I, I always love having you in theCUBE because we can talk about a lot of different subjects. You got a great, you know, you're, you're, you're part analyst, you know, you were obviously a, a fairly prominent uh, a journalist and obviously now a you know, technologist. So I wanted to get your take on, on open source. You guys are big in open source. You made some investments there. You've, 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 you've supported the community in a, in, a, in a big way. What's your take on what's going on in open source, specifically within Oracle? Um, yeah. And, and you know, a lot of people saying, oh, the open source community will catch up. Uh, you know, Oracle's really not committed to open source. It risks their business model. At the same time, here's a company with 39% operating margins, 45% last quarter, throwing off $14 billion you know, in 12 months of free cash flow. So something's working, right. you know, but, but the, the, the naysayers will say, and I've been one of those, that geez, the open source community will eventually you know, catch up and provide equivalent value to the mainframe, the red mainframe. What's your take on all that? Yeah, I think there are certainly opportunities where people may have been using one commercial application where there is a suitable opportunity to use an open source application. So, you know, we see a lot with the new popular data stores such as MongoDB and Cassandra, which seem to be at the intersection of uh, adoption, but also budget being assigned to those applications. Of course, the big story in open source around Oracle is MySQL. You know, we don't see as much about MySQL inside of Oracle as we saw without Oracle. We at Fusion IO see a huge opportunity with MySQL and have done a lot of work there to do optimizations that go above and beyond just providing acceleration from Flash. Uh, specifically, I'm referring to the ability to do atomic writes, which provide more performance, uh, and, and less infrastructure and extend the duration of the flash memory. Which you've memory. done with Percona. We've done that right. with both Percona and, uh, and MariaDB. Right, yeah, so those yeah, for, for customers who are using MySQL from Percona or from MariaDB, there are phenomenal opportunities with them in the open source arena. Uh, the open source arena, I think, is going to continue to provide the innovation that is needed to showcase what's possible with these new technologies. So we're focused very much on uh, evangelizing the capabilities of flash-aware applications, we're still in a world where many applications, where the thinking behind the application all funnel down to how am I going to optimize I.O. All these requests are going to funnel down into a single platter with a single moving head on it. That's quite a different world from where we live in today where you could throw thousands of simultaneous requests to a flash memory product from Fusion IO or elsewhere and have those responses all come back at the same time. So this is not something that's going to happen overnight. We're seeing the uh, increase in awareness of flash aware applications, but it will take time as, as with all new technologies. But I do think that open source is in a very unique position to move quickly and showcase what can be possible not only with open source applications, but also with commercial applications too. Gary, thanks very much. I always appreciate your perspectives. Uh, we are running out of time here, but love having you on theCUBE. Welcome right. back anytime. One, so. one more quick thing. I mentioned yeah, that we have a great demonstration at the Fusion I.O. booth in conjunction with Cisco and Oracle and Emulex. We're showcasing uh, a Cisco UCS-based Oracle configuration doing 2.5 million 
IOPS, and that's from the Oracle Orion storage benchmark. And so again, this is an opportunity, take the performance up at the top, take the cost savings down below, but if you want to see the latest and greatest in terms of Oracle performance, or cost savings, uh, swing by the Fusion Awesome, Iowa. all right Gary, appreciate <laughs> you coming by. Thanks very uh, much. And, uh, keep right there, Teradata's coming up next, we're going to unpack what, uh, what's, what's going on there with one of Oracle's bigger competitors. Keep right there, this is theCUBE, right back after this.